Welcome to Impact Makers Radio, featuring industry thought leaders sharing problem-solving insights to help grow your business and live the life you love. And here's your host, Stuart Andrew Alexander. Hi, and welcome to another Let's Talk Bankruptcy Conversation. And during this segment of the show, I am very happy that we finally have bankruptcy attorney Manaz Khan, partner of the Kublan Khan PLC, calling in all the way from Falls Church, Virginia. Now, Manaz, who is considered to be a leader in the area of bankruptcy, will be talking to you today about a very interesting topic. See, Manaz is here to answer that question on many of our listeners' minds, which is, if you have certain assets, can you still file for a no asset chapter seven bankruptcy case? Now that sounds really, really interesting. So if you are one of the increasing amounts of people in the Falls Church, Virginia area wanting to know more about today's topic, you might just want to Yeah, take a break, log out of Facebook, turn off Twitter, and if you're Instagramming, put that down as well, or anything else that may cause a distraction. And you know something? I just thought about it. You might as well grab a notepad and pen and get ready to take some notes as we listen in to what Manaz has to share with us today. So with that said, she's a very, very busy lady, so let's not keep her waiting any longer. Welcome to the show, Manas. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, excellent. So with that said then, can you just briefly, in your own words, Manas, describe the kinds of people who you serve and the various types of situations they find themselves in when they come to you for your help? Uh, well, I basically help the normal people like you and me. I I do not represent creditors. I only represent consumers like you, as I said, uh, like normal general people. Mm. When when these people have some kind of financial difficulties, when they are going through difficult stages in their lives, when they are unable to pay their bills, uh, that's when they they come to us to see if they have a way out if they can have a fresh start in their life. Uh, And that's when we help them to figure out whether they can be qualified to file a relief under bankruptcy and whether they can have a discharge where most of their debt will be discharged and they don't have to worry about those financial uh, problems anymore, at least at this stage of their life. And they can, as I said, have a fresh start. Mm -hmm. So keeping in mind that anything you share with us today, Manaz, is not legal advice or legal assistance. It's purely for the purpose of disseminating information. Can we both agree on that before we move on then, Manaz? Yes, definitely. Okay, so with that said, when you think about those people who you just described, those normal consumers who find themselves facing bankruptcy or any kind of financial worries, what's the most common misconception that you come across while you're helping them to solve their problems? The common misconception that I actually hear almost on a daily basis is that, hey, I know I have some assets, I have cars, I have a house, I have retirement accounts. So whether I'll be eligible to file for a Chapter 7 bankruptcy or I am not, because the basic misconception is that I am not. That's what people think, and they would think whether they will have to file another form of bankruptcy, which is Chapter 13, where they will have to pay part of their income to their creditors. Mm. Uh, but they they just have that. When they call us, they, they ask us, okay, can I file for Chapter 13? And then you will have to keep asking them questions that why do you think you have to file in some other chapter rather than Chapter 7, no asset case? And generally, the answer is, oh, because I have assets. Okay, what kind of assets do you have? I have cars. I have a house. I have retirement accounts. 
or certain other assets. And then you will have to sit down with them and see whether those assets are exempt. Now, when you say exempt means that in with every state law and a federal law, there are certain property and assets that, that are exempt from the reach of your creditors. Means that even if you file for bankruptcy, your creditor cannot get that asset from you. Means you can still keep that asset even if you are filing for bankruptcy. So, for example, I can I can tell you that I can since I am licensed to practice in Virginia only, I cannot give I cannot give out any information on any other states, mm-hmm. but I can give you the information for Virginia only that for example in Virginia, if you are filing for bankruptcy and you have a car that worth less than $6,000, you can certainly keep that car. Nobody can take that car away from you. Right. If you have a house that does not have any equity in it, you can definitely keep it. Nobody will be interested in your house that does not have any equity in it. Now, even if you have equity and you are married and the house is jointly titled ten- tenancy by the entirety titlement with your spouse, and if the house has an equity, even if it has a million dollar equity, you can still keep that house because it is jointly titled with, with your wife. And people normally don't know that. Uh, wife or husband, your spouse, I should say. Or if you have a retirement account, the retirement accounts are completely exempt. Means if you have $1 in your retirement account or if you have $1 million in your rec- retirement account, Nobody can touch that retirement account. You can keep that retirement account even if you file uh, your Chapter 7 bankruptcy, which is generally referred to as no asset case. So that's why people think that it's a no asset case. Now I have assets. This means I cannot file this case, Mm -hmm. which is totally wrong. So you, you have to go into detail talk to, of course, an attorney to see if you still can qualify before making assumptions and that, okay, I cannot, that's why I shouldn't talk to anyone. Right. That's some great insight. So thanks for sharing that with us, Manaz. So, yeah, let's just expand on that a little, a little bit. Um, based on what you just shared with us and obviously keeping your client's confidentiality in mind, Please share an example or a case study, so to speak, of how you've actually helped or how you would go about helping somebody who came to you with those challenges, those misconceptions you just described, and what kind of transformational results you were able to or would be able to gain for them. Um, I can can give you an example of... um, one of my recent cases, it was a Chapter 7 case. Um, my client came to me. I just had a loss in my business. I had a business. It, it's it's not in a loss. I, I cannot operate it. I do not have any income, although I do have a house which has almost $200,000 equity in it. Mm-hmm. And if I file for Chapter 7 bankruptcy, of course, the court is going to take it from me and distribute it among my creditors. I sat down with him. I looked at the deed of the property. It was jointly titled with his spouse. And I said, you know what? You have a hope. You do not have to lose your house if you file for your Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Because even if he wanted to pay off his creditors using the equity in the house, he couldn't because of his, as you know, because of your credit. If you don't make a payment a couple of months, nobody is going to give you any loans anymore. So he could not refinance the house and pay off his Crater, so he really did not have any option um, to pay off his crater. So we sat down, we looked at the deed. It was uh, tenancy by the entirety with his spouse, and we filed the Chapter Seven bankruptcy case for him. And his case actually just recently got discharged, and he got to keep his house that had all the equity in it, and all his um, case was all his other creditors were discharged. So he doesn't have to pay any of his creditors, even a single penny. And again, he got to keep his house, which, which has more than $200,000 equity in it. So which is, which is a very, very big 
advantage that you have if your house is jointly titled with your spouse. As a reminder, my guest today is bankruptcy attorney Manaz Khan, partner at the Kublan Khan PLC in Falls Church, Virginia. And today's topic is if you have certain assets can you still file for a no asset chapter seven bankruptcy case? Now with that in mind, Manaz, and for those people who are listening in right now, they're looking at the possible chapter seven case. What common pitfalls are are out there that you'd like to bring to their attention, regardless of what situations they find themselves in? I I can think of one very uh, common uh, common issue then that they have is they have certain non-exempt assets. Mm. If they can somehow transfer those non-exempt assets, for example, in a late layman's term, some money in your bank account, five thousand, six thousand, seven thousand. Anything that's beyond what you can keep, there is a limit of 5000 in Virginia and anything that includes all the personal and real property. So if you have $10,000, let's suppose, in your bank account, and if you're filing for bankruptcy, the chances are that the trustee is going to take away all the money that is above and beyond the exempt amount of money that you can actually keep. Now, what you can do in situation like this is, is um, you can transfer those non-exempt assets into an exempt assets. And as we discussed earlier, that your retirement accounts are all exempt. So if you can, and if it is available to you, if you can transfer your non-exempt assets, like your money in your bank account, into your retirement funds, which is all exempt, then you can basically um, keep your money and save it for your future. And you can keep it away from the creditors. So that is one thing that you, one of the things that you can do in order to save your non-exempt assets. And of course, if you talk to a professional, they can let you know um, other ways of, saving your assets, even if uh, you are filing for bankruptcy. Mm. Uh, But that depends on case-to-case basis. Of course, the professional is going to talk to you, and they will look at your your specific situation, your unique situation, to tell you exactly what um, what is good for you. So you cannot generalize everything, but that's just one of the examples that I can give you that sometimes you think that you cannot do anything about it, but sometimes you can, even if you have assets. So again, it comes back to the same point that if you have assets, you can still file for bankruptcy. You just need someone to tell you how to be prepared for it before you file your case, of course, following the law. Well, I Manaz, you're sharing some really great insights today that our listeners are going to find very useful. And you've kind of made me curious, Manaz. Let me ask you this. How many years have you been a practicing bankruptcy attorney? I have been practicing for six years now. Right. So in those six years of being a practicing bankruptcy attorney, What's most important to you about being able to help your clients to achieve their desired outcomes? Personally, I feel like you have to have a relationship with your client Mm -hmm. uh, so that they feel comfortable with you. They feel comfortable talking to you so -hmm. that they are telling you the complete picture and not hiding anything from you. Because that's, that's my main issue, that if the client hide some important information while you are working with them, uh, there will be a problem in the case. So the most, the important, the most important thing in, in my profession, I feel like, is to have the confidence of the client. They should feel comfortable around you so that they can tell anything and everything and mm-hmm. let you decide what is good for them and, and what is in their best interest. And when you know everything, what you are dealing with, then you are in a better position to help them. So for, for me, the four 
the first and the foremost is just create that relationship with them where they are comfortable around you. Right. I can imagine that's really important because full disclosure is, is paramount, right? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Because as an attorney, you are also signing the pleadings and petitions that, okay, this is all correct. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's also good for the attorney and for the client. Okay, so while we're talking about what's most important to you, and thank you very much for sharing that, by the way, could you just spend a brief moment telling us a little bit about your background, and especially in terms of your formal background and your experience as it relates to the topic of bankruptcy? Uh, Sure. I started my career uh, almost 16 years ago as a paralegal in a law firm that mostly used to do bankruptcies and immigration. And that's when I started learning how to do it and started helping uh, other people. I started learning how to prepare the forms and all that. And and that's uh, that's when I started it and grow in my field, went to law school, got my uh, JD, got my license. And now I am, after 16 years, I am doing the same thing, but as an attorney. So when you think about those people who, yeah, they're in debt, they're looking at a possible Chapter 7 case, and they're wanting to know a little bit more about, yeah, the assets that they have, and are they still able to file a no-asset Chapter 7 bankruptcy case? With that picture in mind then, um, Manaz, what would be your final thoughts that you'd like to share with them before we close out with our last question for today? I would say, don't be scared. Call us. Call anyone. Call any bankruptcy attorney. Don't be scared. Don't be ashamed of it. Uh, Nobody is going to judge you. Things happen. Life happens to every one of us. We, We can have difficult situations. And if you are one of those, don't don't scare don't be scared that would be my first thing call call us and we will find a way to help you uh, don't be shy we are not here to judge you we are here to help you that's what i would say right because bankruptcy is not a bad thing right it has this stigma around it but at the end of the day it's a fresh start is it not it is it is a fresh start and you will be you will be surprised that in just two to three years, you will see a huge difference in your credit report in how uh, people will will take you as credit worthy and all those things. And if you will sit on, on, on your debt for the rest of your life, you won't get anywhere. You have to finish that era in your life and have a new start, fresh start, better start, and so that you can get to where you want to get to. Just because something bad happens doesn't mean that it has to stay there. So, Manaz, placing myself in the position of the listener right now, if I have certain assets and I want to know if I can still file for a no-asset Chapter 7 bankruptcy case, what would be the easiest way to find you? It really depends on you. You can call me, you can email me, you can come see me, whatever is convenient for you, you do it. I, I all, most of the time I can give, if you are far from me, I can give you consultation over the phone. If you are closer, you can come to my office, you can email me with your questions. I, I can be available anywhere, wherever you feel comfortable with. Okay, so let's share those contact details so that people will be able to reach out to you then, Manaz. Sure. My direct line number is 703-844-0073. My direct email address is manazkhanesq at gmail.com. It's just like how I spell my name, M-E-H-N-A-Z. K-H-A-N-E-S-Q at gmail.com or you can also email me at menaz at kublonkhan.com or go to my website kublonkhan.com and contact me through the website. Totally up to you. However you feel comfortable, you can call, write, 
come, stop by, see me anytime. Fantastic. So unfortunately, Manaz, that is all we have time for today. Once more, ladies and gentlemen, we have been listening to bankruptcy attorney Manaz Khan. I just love that name, Manaz, Manaz. I could just keep saying it, Manaz. It just rolls off your tongue so nicely. It sounds so round and warm and welcoming. Anyway, again, <laughs> we've been listening to Manaz Khan, bankruptcy attorney, Thank you so much for sharing so generously with us today, Manaz. I really just have a feeling that we've began to, yeah, only scrape the tip of the iceberg with the amount of information that you could have shared with us today. However, we are limited by time. So thank you. You certainly have demonstrated that you are a true educator advocate and trustworthy advisor for your client's success. So thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. You are so welcome, Manaz, my dear. And I'd also like to take a moment to say a big thank you to you. Thank you to you, the listener, of course. Thanks for joining us on, yeah, what I can only describe as a very insightful and informative discussion with one of the leading bankruptcy attorneys in the Falls Church, Virginia area today. Again, just once more as a reminder, her name is Menaz Khan. Make sure you do check her out. Give her a call. She shared her phone number. Visit her website. Send her an email. Whatever you decide to do, I'm sure after listening to Manaz today, you're going to be in a great place to get started. So that's it for today, folks. Again, my name is Stuart Andrew Alexander. Nothing as romantic as Manaz Khan. Oh, I just love that name. Just plain old boring Stuart Andrew Alexander. But anyway, we'll be back shortly with some more leading bankruptcy professionals in this our series of Let's Talk Bankruptcy Conversations. So, until then, take care, have a great day, and we'll talk real soon. Thank you for tuning in to Impact Makers Radio. To listen to all past, present, and future industry thought leaders and trendsetters, visit us at impactmakersradio.com.